In this video, our subject is positioning and lifting patients and residents. We will discuss getting ready, complications of immobility, the six basic positions, safety considerations, how to move a person up in bed, how to turn a person onto the side, how to perform log rolling, and finishing up. As nursing assistants, we pride ourselves on being able to empathize with those who are in our care, imagining how they feel in any given situation, and anticipating how our actions will affect them. So let's imagine for a moment what it would be like not to be able to move or change position. It would be uncomfortable, right? Worse than that, long periods of immobility can cause serious complications to a person's skin, muscles, and joints. Changing position frequently when we are lying down or sitting is what helps to prevent those serious complications and keep us comfortable. Although most of our patients or residents are able to move and change position as they need to, others may be too weak or ill, or they may have disabilities that prevent them from being able to reposition themselves. Assisting your patients or residents with repositioning will not only help them to be more comfortable, but will also prevent complications that could seriously affect their health. Preparation, that is getting ready to manage your work in a manner that is safe, healthful, and efficient, is key to successful health care. No matter what tasks you'll be performing during your shift, whether those tasks are planned or unanticipated, you will benefit from a routine of careful preparation. Begin each interaction with patients or residents by performing these steps. Wash your hands. Gather all needed supplies. Knock before entering the person's room. Introduce yourself using your name and title and greet the person by name, remembering that a friendly greeting helps establish rapport. Carefully identify the person adhering to your facility's approved method. Explain to the person the procedure you're about to perform and make sure the person understands before you begin. If necessary, show visitors where they can wait outside the room. Provide privacy by closing the door and curtains. As appropriate, drape the person for modesty. And then, throughout the procedure, see to safety using proper body mechanics and following all safety precautions for equipment use and infection control. When repositioning a patient or resident, there are specific other getting ready steps you can take to ensure the person's safety. Make sure that wheels on the bed or wheelchair are locked before you attempt to move or reposition a person. Plan how you will go about repositioning the person and get help from others if necessary. Make sure you are aware of any limitations or restrictions concerning the movement or positioning of the person. People in our care might need help repositioning for many reasons. They might be recovering from surgery, immobilized in a cast, or in traction paralyzed, unconscious, or very weak. In all these cases, an inability to change position can cause discomfort as well as serious complications. While immobility can cause complications in almost every body system, the most common complication of immobility is pressure ulcers. Also called bed sores or decubitus ulcers, pressure ulcers form when bony areas press against a mattress, chair, or other surface. Pressure ulcers can even develop as a result of bed linens pressing on the top of a person's toes. That pressure slows down blood flow to the tissues being pressed between bone and the surface the person is lying or sitting on. The longer a person remains in one position, the more likely that person is to develop a pressure ulcer. How do we prevent pressure ulcers? A person who is immobilized or on bed rest must be repositioned at least once every two hours. When the person is repositioned regularly, there is much less likelihood for pressure ulcers to form. 
Another complication of immobility involves the bones and muscles. Contractures occur when a joint is held in the same position for too long a time. There is stiffness and shortening of the tendons, resulting in loss of range of motion of the joint. Loss of calcium is another complication of immobility, and one that results in brittle bones, making the person even more fragile. Respiratory complications of prolonged immobility include decreased oxygenation and pneumonia. <laughs> Fluids and mucus settle in the lungs if the person is left in one position too long. This creates an environment favorable for the growth of bacteria, which can lead to pneumonia. Another serious complication of immobility is the formation of blood clots in the lower legs. Blood clots can form when blood flow from the legs is slowed due to a decrease in muscle activity from immobility. When you reposition patients or residents, observe them for signs or symptoms of complications of immobility, and be sure to notify the nurse immediately if you observe any of the following. Reddened skin, especially over bony areas, that does not return to its normal color after gentle massage of the surrounding tissue. Pale, white, or shiny skin over a bony area. Tears, scrapes, or skin that looks burned. Hot, reddened, painful areas in the lower legs. Do not rub these areas because doing this could dislodge a blood clot, which could then move to a vital organ. A new occurrence of urinary or bowel incontinence. New complaints of pain on movement and any disconnected or heavily draining tubes or drains. Six basic positions are used when a person must remain in bed or seated for a long period of time. Supine, Fowlers, Lateral, Prone, Sims, and sitting. In the supine position, the person is simply lying on his back. The bed is flat and the person's head is supported with a pillow. Optionally, pillows may be used to support the person's arms or hands. Pillows can also be placed underneath the person's knees, lower legs, or lower back. Fowler's position is a variation of the supine position. Instead of being flat, however, the head of the bed is elevated between 45 and 60 degrees. Semi-fowler's position, also known as low fowler's, is with the head of the bed elevated between 30 and 45 degrees. Semi-fowler's position is comfortable for watching TV or reading. It is also good for people who have trouble breathing when they are lying flat. In certain situations, the semi-fowler's position is required such as when a patient or resident is on aspiration precautions, receiving tube feedings, or experiencing reflux problems due to hiatal hernia. High Fowler's position is with the head of the bed elevated 60 to 90 degrees. This position is useful during meals where it aids digestion and during grooming. In any of the Fowler's positions, the bed can be bent at the knees or you can place pillows under the person's knees and calves. In the lateral position, the person is lying on his side and it is the person's side that describes the position. Left side down is left lateral position. Right side down is right lateral position. In either lateral position, the lower leg should be straight and the upper leg bent at the knee. Place pillows under the person's neck and head, between the person's legs, and under the person's upper arm. Another pillow can be placed snugly against the person's back to keep him in the proper position. A modification of the lateral position places the person on his side but leaning slightly toward the back. This position places less pressure over the trochanter area of the hip than the lateral position does. Both lateral positions are commonly used for people with back pain, those in need of spine pressure relief, and those in a body cast. A person in the prone position is lying face down. 
For comfort, turn the person's head to the side and put a small pillow under it. To make breathing easier, another small pillow is placed under the lower abdomen and pelvis. A third pillow is placed underneath the lower legs to keep the feet aligned and to prevent the toes from pressing against the bed. Many people find the prone position uncomfortable. Make sure you check with a nurse before putting a person in the prone position. When the prone position is used, it is typically for a short period of time. A person is placed in Sims position prior to receiving an enema. Sims position is also used to relieve pressure on areas susceptible to pressure ulcers such as the tailbone. In Sims position, the patient or resident's head is turned to one side. The person is lying on his side but will be nearly prone. The upper leg is bent sharply at the knee and is supported by a pillow. The upper arm is bent at the elbow with the hand in front of the face, palm down. The lower leg is straight and the lower arm extends out from the side, hand near the hips, palm up. In the proper sitting position, the person's feet should rest flat on the floor or on the footrests of the wheelchair. The knees are bent at approximately 90 degrees and the calves of the legs do not touch the chair. The person's hips and back rest against the back of the chair. Paralyzed arms should be supported on pillows. A person who cannot hold his body upright for long periods of time may need postural supports to assist in good body alignment. As we mentioned earlier, a person who is immobilized or on bed rest must be repositioned at least once every two hours. The usual sequence is two hours on one side, followed by two hours in either the supine or Fowler's position, then two hours on the opposite side. When positioning and lifting your patients or residents, safety is of paramount importance, not just for the person you are moving, but for yourself as well. Shearing is caused by pulling a person across a sheet or other surface that offers resistance. The skin is dragged in a direction opposite that of the underlying tissues and muscles, injuring the skin and beginning the process of skin breakdown. Friction occurs when two surfaces, such as a sheet and a person's skin, rub against each other. The rubbing action can injure the skin and contribute to skin breakdown. Lifting or rolling a person into position instead of pulling or dragging helps to reduce shearing and friction. Body alignment is important. After positioning a person, always check for proper body alignment. A person in proper body alignment is positioned so that the spine is not twisted or crooked. Imagine a line that connects the person's nose, sternum, and pubic bone and then continues between the person's knees and ankles. This imaginary line should be straight whether the person is supine, lateral, or prone. Proper body alignment relieves strain on muscles and joints, promotes good heart and lung function, and helps prevent contractures, pressure ulcers, and other complications. Proper body alignment can be maintained by using supportive devices such as pillows, rolled sheets, towels, and blankets. A pillow can be used to protect bony areas such as the ankles or knees, and a pillow or a rolled sheet behind the person will prevent him from rolling backward. Moving another person, especially one who is larger than you are and unable to offer much in the way of assistance, is hard work. It's no surprise that back injuries are the most common work-related injury in the field of nursing. 
Using proper body mechanics and lifting techniques can help you to protect yourself from injury. And it's not that difficult to do. Body mechanics are as easy as A, B, C. A for alignment, B for balance, and C for coordinated movement. Think of the A or alignment as good posture. Keeping good alignment through good posture lessens strain on your joints and muscles. Specifically, good alignment keeps your back in a neutral position. B or balance involves a wide base of support and a low center of gravity. When you're standing, the base of support is your feet. Separating your feet makes your base of support broader. Your center of gravity is your torso, the heaviest part of your body. Bending your knees puts your center of gravity lower, closer to your base of support. This also takes strain off your back. C, or coordinated body movement, uses the weight of your body to help with movement. This might be as simple as shifting your weight from one foot to another, allowing the momentum of the movement to assist you in your task. Using good body mechanics is important, especially when you must lift heavy equipment or move people who have trouble moving on their own. As a nursing assistant, you will be doing a lot of lifting. If you do not use proper technique, you will risk serious injury to your back. Not only are back injuries painful, they can also be serious enough to end your career. Simply put, the muscles of your back are not designed to lift weight. That's why you see competitive weightlifters using their leg muscles, then their arms and shoulders. Here are some tips for safe, successful lifting. Ask for assistance with heavy lifting. Place your body as close as possible to the person or object you are trying to lift. For example, positioning the bed at a comfortable working height reduces your need to bend over when lifting or repositioning a person. Plan the movement of your lift. Consider using equipment such as a mechanical lift or a lift sheet. Remember to keep your feet shoulder width apart. Bend your knees. Face the object or person you're lifting. Never bend and twist. Use the large muscles of your legs, not the small muscles of your back. People can slide down in their beds as a result of gravity. This is uncomfortable, can interfere with a person's ability to breathe, and can also put the person out of proper body alignment. As a nursing assistant, you will often find it necessary to move patients or residents up in their beds. In preparation for moving a person up in bed, make sure the bed is positioned at a comfortable working height for good body mechanics. Then make sure the wheels are locked for safety. To begin the procedure, lower the side rails on the side of the bed you're working from. Remove the person's pillow and place it against the headboard of the bed. Lower the head of the bed so that the bed is flat as tolerated. All right. Fan fold the top linens to the foot of the bed. Face the head of the bed with your outside foot about 12 inches in front of the other and your knees bent slightly. Raise your feet up. Ask the person to bend his knees. There you go. Place your outside arm under the person's head and shoulders. Lock your other arm with the person's closest arm. Then ask the person on the count of three to lift his buttocks while pressing his heels into the mattress as you lift his shoulders toward the head of the bed. There are some other methods of helping people to move up in bed. The person may use a trapeze bar suspended from a bar across the bed. The person grasps the trapeze bar with both hands and uses arm strength to rise up. Or, with the assistance of a co-worker, you can use a lift sheet to help a person move up in bed. To move a person up in bed using a lift sheet, stand at the side of the bed opposite your co-worker with your feet spread about 12 inches apart and with your knees slightly bent to protect your back. Grasp the edge of the lift sheet and roll it over as close to the person's body as possible. A rolled lift sheet will provide for a better grip. Grasp the rolled edge with both hands, palms and fingers facing down. 
One hand should be level with the person's shoulders, and the other should be level with the person's hips. Okay. On the count of three, slowly and carefully lift up on the lift sheet in unison and move the person toward the head of the bed. Avoid dragging the person across the bottom linens. When you have finished moving the person up in bed, reposition the pillow under the person's head, straighten the linens, and draw the top linens over the person. After the person has been moved up in bed, complete your finishing up steps as described in the final section of this video. To reposition a person on his side, that is into the lateral position, begin as usual by gathering your supplies, which in this case are three additional pillows. Position the bed at a comfortable working height to protect your back. Then make sure the wheels are locked for safety. Go ahead, take your pillow. Remove the person's pillow, placing it at the head of the bed on its edge against the headboard. Then lower the head of the bed so that it is as flat as the person can tolerate. Lower the side rail on the side you will be working from, but leave the opposite rail up. Fan fold the top linens to the foot of the bed. Stand at the bedside with your feet about 12 inches apart and your knees slightly bent to protect your back. Move the person to the side of the bed nearest you by first gently sliding your hands under the person's head and shoulders, then moving the person's upper body toward you. Gently slide your hands under the person's torso and move the person's torso toward you. Gently slide your hands under the person's hips and legs and move the person's lower body toward you. Now you are ready to turn the person onto the side. Grasp the person's arm nearest you and cross it over the chest. Grasp the leg nearest you and cross it over the other leg. If the person cannot cross the leg, simply bend the knee of the leg nearest you. you. Then place one of your hands on the person's shoulder that is nearest you and place the other one on the person's hip that is nearest you. Gently roll the person away from you. Place pillows under the person's head and neck, lengthwise between the person's knees and legs, under the person's upper arm, and behind the person's back. Make sure that the clothing and bed linens underneath the person are smooth with no wrinkles. Then draw the top linens over the person. Then complete your finishing up steps as described in the final section of this video. To log roll a patient or resident is to roll the person onto the side in one smooth movement while keeping the person's spine aligned. Log rolling is performed whenever it is necessary to move a person who has had back surgery or an injury to the spine. As part of getting ready for this procedure, you will need to find one or two co-workers who are available to help you. You will also need a lift sheet. Position the bed at a comfortable working height to protect your back. Then make sure the wheels are locked for safety. Place the pillow at the head of the bed on its edge. Lower the side rail on the side you'll be working from. Fan fold the top linens to the foot of the bed. Both assistants stand on the same side of the bed, one at the person's shoulders, the other at the person's hips. Your feet should be about 12 inches apart and your knees slightly bent. One assistant's hands go beneath the person's shoulders and lower back. The other assistant's hands go beneath the person's hips and thighs. Both assistants lift at the same time, gently moving the person toward the side of the bed closest to you. In preparation for rolling the person, put a pillow lengthwise between the person's knees. Fold the arm that will be closest to the mattress across the person's chest before turning him onto that side. Next, raise the side rail. Both assistants then move to the opposite side of the bed and lower that side rail. With both assistants working together on the count of three, use the lift sheet to turn the person onto the side, being sure to keep the person's head, spine, and legs aligned. Reposition the person's original pillow under the person's head and straighten the bottom linens. 
Support the person by bolstering the back with pillows. The pillow you placed between the person's legs should remain in place, and additional pillows or folded towels should be used to support the person's arms. Finally, drape the top linens over the person. Then, complete your finishing up steps as described in the final section of this video. When you have finished with a procedure, always follow a routine of finishing up to ensure your patients or residents' safety and comfort. First, confirm comfort and good body alignment, whether the person is seated or in a bed. Leave the person's call light control within easy reach and do the same for any other items the person may want, such as remote control devices, the telephone, or fresh water. Next, see to safety. If appropriate, return the bed to its lowest position. Then, make sure the wheels are locked for safety and place the side rails in ordered or requested positions. If desired, open the curtain or door and ask whether the person would like for visitors to return. If you use gloves, first discard them according to your facility's policy. Then, wash your hands. Finally, report and record all pertinent information about the procedure, including the date and time of the procedure and your full name and title.